Hey, this is Daniel Grove. Thanks for checking out this video. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful space scene. Now, earlier this year, I released a video called How to Make Planets in Blender, and it was a huge hit. And in that video, I did say I'd make a part two. So I started practicing for one of the objects I would teach you how to make, and it turned out to be a bigger and better scene than I expected. So I think this scene deserves its own standalone video. So here it is. And if there's anything I know about the Blender community, it's that you guys love when people get straight to the point. So let's get to it. Let's start with the basics. Shift A, mesh, and go to sphere. This is gonna be our planet, right in the middle of our scene. If you want to, you can increase the segments and rings, maybe 80 and 40. S to size it up, four, enter. And if you want to make things a little bit more advanced, we are going to make a atmosphere layer. So I'm gonna press Shift D, enter to duplicate that and size it up just a little bit. So press S for scale, hold Shift, and then drag your mouse ever so slightly away from your center point. So there's the atmosphere and there's a planet and let's name them like good blender users planet and planet and planet atmo so it'll be right after it next let's make the ring so shift a make a circle and let's turn these vertices up to 200 enter now we can't see it because it's small and it's inside the sphere so s to scale it up and the circle is not actually a mesh it's just vertices in a circle so to make it a mesh Tab into edit mode and press F for fill. So all those vertices get filled and voila, now we actually have a circle mesh. Press I for inset and drag it down. Now this is up to you. If you wanna make a really thick ring, a really thin ring, you want it to be close or far away from the planet, that's really up to your taste. But I'm gonna go right about on the halfway point right here and click to confirm. Go to face mode, so keep, select this middle face and delete, get rid of that face, okay? Now this mesh is actually going to be replaced with a bunch of random asteroids. So we need some rings to help the faces be present in order to populate things evenly. So control R and put your mouse in the middle. See that circle? Before you click and confirm, let's hit the plus button or, or you can use the wheel in your mouse to increase the loop cuts. I'm gonna go to, what is this? Like 10 of them, enter, and then enter again. All right, cool. So the faces are roughly evenly you know, spread and they're not quite squares, but they're close enough. All right, so that is our ring. So let's name that ring. All right, now I'm gonna use one add-on in this video, but it is a free add-on and it's a really great add-on. It's the rock generator. So shift A, mesh rock generator. Okay, cool. So we have a lot of options here. And one of my favorites is the fact that it allows you to make multiple rocks at once and they're all different and random, which is a big time saver. So I'm just gonna make 10 and let's put the roughness at, I don't know, four. And that's good enough for now. If you find these rocks are not detailed enough, you can always come back, regenerate more detailed rocks and replace them later. It's very easy. We're gonna use geometry nodes to distribute these random rock meshes around the ring. And over here, we've got all of our rocks nicely named and numbered and our outliner. That's great. By the way, if your outliner doesn't look like this, click on this little multi you know, image icon and go to view layers. In my opinion, that's the best way to view it. And I also turn on, I'll go to your filter and I turn on render viewport, visibility, and even the selection arrow. Sometimes I use that too. So we have lots of options here. Uh, now with these rocks still selected, which they are selected in the viewport, you just can't see them because again, they're inside the planet. If I press the period key, watch this, it'll zoom all the way in. So we are inside the planet and these are all the rocks overlapped on top of each other. That's okay, keep them selected. Type the letter M for move and then new collection and name it rocks. There we go and enter, all right? Keeping things nice and organized, even it simple. Now uh, we wanna move these rocks uh, kind of outside the planet so we can better see them. So G, move them. By the way, I hit number numpad seven to get a, a flat above you. Now I'm gonna zoom into these guys and I am gonna separate them just so I can see what they each look like. So select one of them, G, let's do this over and over. Grab that, G, grab that, G. And these look nice. They, uh, they use displacement maps and subdivision and uh, just get a lot of great variety and random shapes, which is awesome for asteroids. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna tab into edit mode and make a few of these small and a few of them large. So tab, shrink it down, tab, shrink it down, tab, shrink it up. And you can even you know distort these a little bit, scale it on the X or Y, just add some variety. You don't want all the uh, asteroids and meteors to, sorry, these are not meteors. I know they're asteroids, they're in orbit around a planet. Um, you don't want them all to look the same. So variety is your friend. There we go, cool. If you zoom in, they look nice and bumpy. Now, if you give it a little dirty texture, it'll look even better, or you can be fancy and give them an ice texture with subsurface scattering, and they look awesome like this version of the render that I did. Let's give them a material and just name it rocks. 
a rock. And uh, this first one has rock on it. So let's grab all these others and then shift click this last one that has the rock texture and control L to link and go down to link materials. Now they all have that same material. Now later we can do a little noise or dirt on that rock texture if we want and they'll all have that instantly and yay, time saved. All right, so we got our rocks made. Let's select our ring. Let's get to geometry nodes. This might intimidate you or scare you, but you know, just get over it because uh, geometry nodes are the future and they're awesome. So I did do this with hairs at first, the hair system, um, and it worked, but there were some things lacking that really bothered me. So um, we're moving on into the future and using geometry nodes. Uh, in case you missed what I did there, I split my screen. Let's go back to how it was. You put your mouse right in that top corner. On the inside corner, it turns into a crosshair. Click and drag down. Gives us a new view. Change that view to geometry nodes right there. There we go. And uh, make sure your ring is selected. And let's name this asteroids. Boom. Okay. Although really it's probably ice chunks around a gas chain, but you know, semantics. Uh, so let's give ourselves some rooms. Grab the output, move it over here. Grab the input, move it over here. Now this setup is only going to use five nodes. That's right, only five. So first one, shift A, search, and type in transform. Go plug that into that guy right there. Next is point distribute, shift A, point, oh, typo, point distribute, right? I'm going to distribute the objects that we will assign to it around uh, the faces. Next is the attribute randomize which as you may have guessed, randomizes a specific attribute that you decide. Then we're gonna use another one of these. So there's a shift D, drag it over there. And the last one is point instance, which is what we're going to assign the collection as the instance. It's gonna put it all along the points. So let's start over here with the transform. You don't need to change anything there for now. You can later if you wanna tweak stuff. In the uh, point distribute node, this controls the density. So let's put this up at 10, enter, and the seed, you can get new randomizations. If you don't like how the rocks turn out, you can just hit seed and it'll give you a whole new, you know, random uh, assortment of them. Okay, now this attribute, let's select scale. You can also type it in there. If you didn't have options that drop down, you may be using 2.92, I think it is, or 2.91, and they don't have this built in. I'm using actually 3.0 alpha, which definitely has it, but you will need to update if you want those automatically. I think you can just type it in and it'll work, but I can't quite guarantee that. So. Type in scale for the first one, and let's do a minimum of .01. We may tweak this later, um, and then the maximum of .05. So that we set a minimum size and a maximum size for the scale. It's gonna randomize it. Next one is gonna be used to rotate them. So in this attribute, type in rotation. There it is, point rotation, awesome. And this number you can do, I'm, I'm guessing it's degrees. So let's just do like negative 360 to positive 360. Lots of variety there. And over here in collections, let's select the rocks. And look at that, we already have <laughs> groups of rocks distributed randomly, but we wanted to do not the whole collection at once, but individual objects inside the collection. So now look at this, we got a cool little moon system going on. Nothing fancy, we definitely need to up our uh, density. But before we do that, let's go to our ring object and make sure you apply your scale. Cause this is one thing I messed up when I first did my scene and then later on down the road, I realized, oh my, my ring was actually scaled up. This ring was scaled up really large and that will affect your density. So um, my look at my scale over here. It's almost at 20. So I'm going to press with the ring selected, even though it's invisible, it is selected because the, the rocks have replaced it. Press control A and apply scale. And now, whoa, be careful. And now I've got uh, 8,000 objects in my scene. You know, almost all of those are, of course, these guys. So let's turn our density down, maybe five, I don't know. Um, just to keep things simple, although in the final render, you may want to really increase that. Now, if you go to a side view, you can see all these asteroids are perfectly along this ring. You may not want that. You may want more variety to make it more, uh, you know, realistic um, and to make your scene look more aesthetic. So to do that, there's a really easy trick. We're just going to mess up our ring. We're going to make it vertically distorted. So tab in edit mode. Um, you can go to, I don't think it matters what mode you're in, but press A for select all and then choose subdivide. And down here, we're actually going to increase fractal. Look at this, did you know about this? If you increase fractal, it just shoots things all over the place. It just really messes stuff up. So let's just do it a little bit and then press, you know, I guess enter or get out of that. And now you can scale it on the Z axis to really exaggerate that. So S, Z, and I am in um, individual origins right now. S, Z, as you can tell, it's moving the, the vertices all over the place, which is gonna make your rocks generated at different heights. 
So if that's what you want, that's how you get it. Now at a side view, look at that. Ah, oh, that's good. We got a more random distribution and there's more 3D. If you if you shoot, shoot your camera through here, look at that. Looks sweet. It's cool. Um, put my density back to 10. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks nice. And if your computer is more powerful, you can, of course, go to higher densities and have more detailed, um, you know, uh, asteroids. Just be careful. You might freeze your computer. <laughs> I need to smooth out these these planet spheres. So I'm going to select the atmosphere one and uh, space bar type in smooth. Or is it shade smooth? There it is. And then the one underneath it, space bar, shade smooth. Okay. Now let's make the starry sky behind there. Now I do have a product that's super duper cheap on my Gumroad account, which gives you procedural starry skies with lots of cool controls and tweaking, and also nebula stardust, which you can add and color and tweak. Um, but I'll show you how to make the very basic uh, starry night sky here. Let's go to your shader editor, change this from object to world. Now this is our world settings. I have this weird little setup so that I can give an environment for HDR lighting, but it won't actually render. It's hidden in the render but it still affects everything. And I can actually choose what is visible in the render, which I might want it to be something different. But if you like that, you can just copy this little guy. So let's put this into rendered mode so we can see what's going on. Let's turn off our grid by turning off the extras. And um, we can hide our uh, ring just to make things render a little bit quicker here. Uh, okay, so in our world shader, also I'm gonna delete these guys. Don't really need this for this uh, scene. Let's make a Voronoi texture. So shift A, search, VOR is this is what's going to give us random little dot circles which we're going to tweak into stars all right let's make the skill really high let's start at 200 we may go up from there keep it euclidean shift a at a color ramp after that oh also we need texture coordinates so click on this guy if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled which is a great time saver you can press Control t and it'll automatically give you these texture coordinates into a mapping into the veronoi and then of course plug in the distance into the color ramp and we're going to stretch this color about really big so we can really uh, fine tune things. There we go. And we're going to drag the black up a little bit to about there and the white over here. So we're kind of flip flopping it. Okay. Now plug the color into a background. So search background. Put this over here and plug it all in together. Bada boom, bada bing. Look at that. Starry night sky. All procedural, never ending, never tiling. And it's definitely controlled. You can control the size of the stars. Uh, as, you, as you can see, if you go up here, they're just dots, right? But because they are kind of gradient dots, like they're, you know, they're, I don't know, uh, they're gradients, you can cut them down to that. And if you increase this number, you get more stars. So let's go to 600. Yeah. And you got to bring this up a little bit to show them. There we go. Lots of stars. Cool. I'm going to go back to 200. That's our procedural stars. Go back to material view. Let's make our planet here in the center. Oh, I turn on my extras again. And I'm going to turn off my grid because I don't need a grid for this. So I'm going to hide my atmosphere sphere. <laughs> it's always fun to say. So now I just have my planet sphere. Okay. Make this down here. Change my shader to object. Make a new material. Call it planet. Shift A. Add an image texture. Now I have a collection of planet textures that I've built up over the years. Um, you can find these easily online, most of them for free. Uh, I'm going to use an image of Venus, actually, which is uh, obviously easy to find. Now, if I can only find it, where is it? Venus. Okay, there it is. And voila, we have a planet. You might want to use something more gassy or custom made or, you know, grab a texture from Jupiter or Saturn, but change the hue just so it's alien and different looking than our planets. Now, because this image is already basically an unwrapped panorama into a two by one ratio rectangle image, it perfectly wraps around a sphere. Just automatically the UVs of these spheres when you create them um, is already set up for receiving that type of image. So it's it looks perfect, right? Because it wraps all the way around. Now, if you want to make the atmosphere uh, sphere, you don't have to, but I'm going to use volumetrics or uh, a principled volume shader for this. So if you don't want to tax your computer with this minor, minor detail, you can skip over this, but here's how you do it real quick. Let's make a material for it. Call it Atmo. Delete this principled BSDF. We're not using that. We're going to make a principled volume right here. Plug this into volume. Make sure you don't go into surface. That, that, that has confused me a few times already. I've screwed that up before. Make a color ramp. Plug it in here. Move the white to about over here. 0.3 something. Now here's where the magic comes in. Search for gradient and choose spherical. 
So this is a three dimensional gradient starting from the, the center of the sphere object and going outwards. And we're using a color ramp to modify the fall off of that curve. And then that's going to control the density. So plug color into density there. And you need to have a textures coordinate for this. So let's select the gradient texture, control T and choose object. So the location is based on the object and it's going outwards from the center. So if I go into rendered view, let's see if we can see, if we can see it. I'm going to play with my, my, uh, yeah, there it is. I already see it right there. See the edge zooming in pretty close. Let's make the color of the, um, volume like a, you know, orangey Jupiter color. You don't need to change any of these things, but you can, if you really want to Maybe add a little bit of emissions there to add a little bit of extra light that might mess things up. If you have shadows on the planet, I'm not sure yet. So there you go. Quick and dirty way to make a uh, actual volume based atmosphere around a planet and uh, play with this guy right here. And maybe with some math nodes to make it denser or less dense. Okay. So moving on, let's get to one of my favorite parts of the scene, which is the um, illusion of depth with this ring. When I made my scene, I basically had this and I kept doing different renders with the camera, like, you know, over here in the, in the, uh, the field of rocks and it just wasn't giving me the illusion of like size and grandeur that I really wanted. And I was thinking, what can I do or add or change to make my scene look better? And it was basically atmosphere, which is normally something you use on planetary scenes, right? On a planet, you've got atmosphere, you've got, you know, gases inside of a planet that give distance with buildings and fog and things like that. You don't have that in space, but you kind of do. There are gases and there are particles in space in certain areas, such as floating around a planet that give the illusion of distance and if you want to add a little bit more fantasy to a scene, which I definitely kind of crank that up, it can make a scene look really beautiful and interesting instead of just a bunch of rocks going around a planet, right? So here's how I did that. I tried using volume, I tried doing all kinds of stuff with noise and stuff, and it just was not working. So I realized I just had to fake it. Sometimes you got to fake it till you make it. And this is one of those instances where you got to use a weird trick to get the right uh, result. And it looked amazing and also sped things up ridiculously fast because I was not using volume with my solution. So here's my solution. Shift A, we're going to make a plane. Size it up pretty dang big. Let's get on the X, rotate along the Y 90. Oh, sorry. Rotate on the X 90 degrees and enter. Let's go back to material view. We don't need all that samples going on and put it way back here. And what this is going to be is basically going to give us um, kind of an illusion of dust from this distant part of the ring. We're going to add another one up close to the camera to give us another kind of foggy, foggy, hazy area over here. I'm going to hide my atmosphere sphere, by the way, just to speed things up because it keeps kind of calculating that over there. It's annoying. Hide that guy. Um, okay. So here's how I made this totally procedural atmosphere plane. Let's make a new uh, material. Call this haze back because we are going to make a front one that'll be slightly different scale and just, just ever so slightly different. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to mix a bar gradient with procedural noise, and we're going to give it transparency so that you can actually see the stars through it. And it's going to fade off on the top and fade off on the bottom. So let's start off with the basic part, which is the gradient node. Make sure you got linear. I'm going to press Control T. Keep that at generated, and everything right here is the same. Next, we're going to make a color ramp. Move the white to dot five in the middle. Click plus to make a new color handle. Move it over here and make it pure black. Put that one at dot eight and then the other one at dot two. So they're evenly kind of bunched up against the middle point, right? All right, now we're going to make a curves to further control the fall off of this. I found this curve to work pretty good in my original scene. Plug that into there. And here's where the mixing happens. We're gonna make a mix RGB which is a magical node that allows us to mix all kinds of things and put this in the first input. So this is the original signal is this bar gradient. You can plug it into here to really see what it looks like. There we go. It's actually going the wrong direction. I can rotate it over here if I need to. Let's try X 90 degrees. Nope. Let's try Y 90 degrees. Nope. I'll just do it the cheating way. I'm going to rotate the whole plane R Y 90 degrees and then shrink it down on the Z shrink it out on the X. <laughs> like I said, fake it till you make it. Now we got this really nice, um, smooth fade off bar, which is perfect. 
Now we need to enable transparency and every video I do this, I have to complain about this because we're still having to go to Eevee to use transparency and then we have to go back to cycles. So in the render tab, change to Eevee, go to your material, go to the bottom where it says settings and blend mode. I, I like to use alpha uh, blend, but you can try the other ones if, to, get, to get slightly different results. Now that we got that set, let's go back and change our render engine back to cycles, which is ridiculous. I should not have to do that every time, but uh, it is what it is. Blender 3.0 better fix that. And if it doesn't, then I'm out. I'm out of here. I'm going to 3ds Max. I'm just kidding. I would totally use C4D instead. Okay, so we're going to plug in this whole thing actually into alpha, not color. So put it into the alpha channel. Let's give this emissions a light blue, sky blue color and turn up the strength to two, right? Now we need to mix something with this bar. What are we gonna mix? Some noise to break it up. So it's not just a solid chunk of light. It's gonna have some, you know, disturbances in it. Some, some, uh, some turbulence. Shift A. Moose Grave, of course, is my go-to for that. Plug it right into the second spot and change your mix mode to multiply, which is going to take the dark pixels of your Moose Grave and it's going to use it to darken the bar, which is good. So we don't want a perfect, you know, bar of light. Watch this. Ooh, it's going to break it up. So let's tweak our Moose Grave real quick. Let's change it to scale of dot one, detail 16, dimension dot, I don't know, two five, and then lacanarity, let's do 2.3, okay? Oh, we need to apply our scale. So apply scale, and let's add a texture coordinates to this guy. And let's use the object coordinates right there. Look at that. Looks like the edge of a galaxy if you have it from the right view. Now we, are, we need to set our camera up so that we can really see what this is looking like. So let's, uh, we have a camera already in our scene and it is by default, of course, the actual camera. So if you press zero, on the numpad, it goes to the camera view, which is a super boring view. I'm gonna get out of that by pressing zero again. Now I'm gonna use my 3D viewport to get the view that I want. So I'm gonna move around. You can hold shift and alt to kind of pan, scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out, get it's very sensitive. Okay, once I get roughly a view I like, I'm gonna press control alt zero to set the actual camera to my current view. So now I have my camera here. G, Z, Z to zoom out get to the edge of the rock field, G to move it down, um, do some little wonky rotation here. If you want to pivot your camera around the center point, put your 3D cursor in the middle by pressing Shift C, go to 3D cursor, go back to your camera view by pressing zero. And if you press RR, look at this, you can rotate around the 3D cursor, right? So now we can choose if we want to be above the, start, the field or below it, the middle of it, a little something, you know, Kind of get a good spot. Like I don't like that. I don't want a rock right in front of me. I want kind of an open hole to see the see the planet through. Cool. And I might even shrink my planet down a little bit. So I'm gonna select my planet and my atmosphere. Just shrink it down. There we go. I don't I don't really want planets being cut off by the camera view unless it's a you know, like a ginormous planet. I want it to be in view. Okay, so we have our background um, you know, haze layer, if you will. Let's do another one up close to the camera. So seven for above view, shift D, Y. Let's move this one up here, pretty close to the camera. Actually, you might wanna put it, I don't know, let's try right there. Now let's go to the material and click this double page button to make it a, a new um, unique material. So this will be Hayes front, you can rename it. So it has everything that it had before, but now we can change this and it won't ruin the back one. So for this front one, let's press zero and see what this looks like. It looks pretty crazy right now. It'll look cooler later. Um, we can actually make this a little bit more transparent altogether by dropping the white point on the curves, which is right here. So solid white is completely opaque, right? In the alpha, if we're talking about alpha, which is transparency, black is transparent, white is opaque or visible. So if we change our white to a gray, it makes it half transparent. We can see through it more. Let's actually drop this down pretty low because we want this to be a very subtle and see-through layer just in front of the camera right there. And let's change our noise to be a little bit not so grainy. We can you know, raise our dimension there and we can uh, make the noise even larger by making a smaller number here. So dot O2, let's just try that. I don't know how, what it's gonna look like yet, but um, yeah, we, you can also, if you want more randomization, go to 4D. 
and you could just play with your W factor to give you kind of a randomized noise. So there we go, a little cloud. I just was holding shift and dragging the W. So I'm gonna render this and see what it looks like. It might look terrible, but hey, that's the only way to find out what it's gonna look like is hit the F12 button. Okay, and here it is. It doesn't look amazing yet, but we'll get there. So some few things that I noticed is the background, you know, that haze is just a little too um, gr gritty and the front haze is not gritty enough. It's a little too blurry and blobby. Um, I am gonna add a light blue color to these rocks so that they kind of fit in with this haze that I'm adding as if this haze is actually, you know, smaller ice particles that are just kind of diffusing the sunlight around this planet. And I don't really like this planet texture. Obviously it's pretty low res, I can see the pixels. Um, but I thought it was, I thought this is what I used originally, but it does not look anything like a gas giant. I definitely want a gas giant look or something that's large enough to have a ring of debris like this. I looked at my original scene and I found that I actually used the atmosphere image of Venus, not the surface. So whoops. So let's do those few things and go from there. Okay. First, let's fix our planet texture. Click on planet, open. I'm just going to type in Atmo. There it is. Venus atmosphere. Oh yeah. It's nice and cloudy and hazy. Also in the render, if you look, I was correct. The atmosphere with the emissions turned up does glow on its own, even if it's in the shadow. So let's turn that off. So we get a little bit more real, realistic atmosphere. Um, look, so click on planet Atmo and let's put our emission strength back to zero. There go. And if you want to speed up your render, just turn it off altogether. It's not completely necessary, but it just adds a nice little halo around the planet. Okay, let's grab our background plane, which is the haze in the background. And let's make it a little less gritty. And I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna turn the, the mix factor down a little bit. So it's not completely destroying that gradient, but it's just kind of complementing it and adding disruption. Um, let's turn the dimension up to what dot three. There we go, dot five looks nice. And let's add some more grit and scale to this front one. So this is the plane right in front of the, well, not right in front of the camera, but close to the camera. I'm gonna play with my scale, a little bit more noise. And I'm definitely gonna turn this mix factor down so we can still see this bar of haze. There we go. There we go, add a little bit more detail to that one. Nice. Okay, let's click on one of these rocks and go to this rock texture. Let's add a little bit of a, um, let's actually, let's add some texture to it. So I'll show you a quick and easy trick to get some texture to a rock. I'm gonna give it a, that kind of icy, desaturated blue color there, really like a, a pale blue. Now to break up this boring blue color, we're gonna use some noise on top of this to make things interesting. So Shift A, Musgrave, there it is. Plug it into color two. Let's um, wait for it to load, there we go. Let's add it a little bit, so turn up your factor. I'm gonna turn the scale down, put the detail all the way up. Dimension down pretty low, below one. And lacunarity just kind of changes the feel of that. Now we don't want it to be like black on blue. Like it's just kind of too, too harsh. So turn this down to pretty low, like, you know, between dot one and dot four. So it's a slight touch. You can add a little bit more detail by using a bump. So bump node, plug it into normals, plug in the uh, noise into that height input and keep these kind of low because things will get really, really noisy. So maybe dot two and dot two, or you can go up a little bit more with the strength. That looks pretty nice right there. It looks like a nice rock. All procedural, my favorite. <laughs> All right. Now, another thing to make your scene more interesting is the camera uh, focal length and position. So two things. First, we're gonna make this a wide angle lens. So we can br bring this from 50 millimeters down to 20 or maybe 30. I'm gonna go to 25. Now this is a wide angle lens now, so we need to zoom in. So G, Z, Z. Now hold shift also to do it a little bit slower, more carefully. Looks pretty sweet. As you fly through these, it looks so cool. Shoo, 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 shoo. With a wide angle lens that um, will be more exaggerated and interesting. So that's why I like wide angle lenses, especially in space for something like this. If there's foreground, it looks great. Um, okay, now the other thing to make this more interesting is the positioning. So we're gonna use what's called a rule of thirds, which is where you divide your visual, whatever it is, whether it's a photograph or a graphic design or a 3D planet into um, nine squares. And we're gonna place our point of interest, which is the planet and the top left intersection. Um, you can pick any of these intersections or lines to use, but I'm just gonna use the top left. So we need to move this over here. We need to rotate this back up to get the asteroids back in there. Put it in a little bit closer. I'm gonna go to 30 millimeter. There we go. 
Now I still like that um, crooked thing going on. So I'm going to go back to individual origins and just rotate the camera. Yeah, that looks way more interesting. Retarget my planet. There we go. Now, if we want to rotate around to get a better position, we can go back to the 3D cursor. And the 3D cursor is still in the middle of the planet. So RZ. Look at this. I'm just rotating the camera around the planet to find a better, you know, aesthetically pleasing arrangement of asteroids. So in the foreground, some in the background, that looks good to me. Now in my scene, I grabbed a few um, asteroids and made them on their own, just not, not geometry nodes, but just free floating. And I positioned them around the camera strategically to better frame the scene to make it more interesting. Just grab a few of these rocks. I'll do four of these. Shift D and put them right in front of the camera. Go to camera view. And they're really big, so let's shrink them down. We got four of them to play with, so let's put this one up here. This one down here. Make sure they don't look like any other asteroids nearby. We can rotate them. Oops, go to individual origin. We can rotate them away from the camera so they don't look like these three guys. Because <laughs> they are all just, you know, siblings of each other. Um, there. And we'll put one really close to the camera. So seven for above view. Let's zoom in here. There we go. And don't put them all in the same plane. You know, give them some distance. There we go. Cool. Now, if we do some depth of field, we can have this one a little bit blurry if you want to go for that look. Awesome. All right. It's already more aesthetically pleasing, right? It looks cooler. One last thing before I hit render again is I noticed the stars are a little bit sparse in my render earlier. So I'm going to go back to world and increase my scale to let's do 500. There we go. And maybe drop this down just a little bit. Okay. Your light source should be set to sun, which means they are. Um, directional lighting that is more like a laser rather than a, a pinpoint or a light bulb. The light will always go in a straight line, not away from the light source, but all in a straight uh, direction. So also put your angle down to a low number like one. So it's a harsh sunlight and you can put your max bounces down to like eight. I think that makes the render a little bit quicker. Let's turn our sun up to six power for the strength and um, maybe a little bit of color, a little bit of a warmer sun. There we go. Cool. And let's hit render now and see what this looks like. All right, definitely looks better. There's some things I can work on. I like that the planet is disappearing because that planet is far away, like super far away, right? That's just how things work in space. So I like that it's obscured. This front level of haze is a little too noisy now. <laughs> it's kind of distracting. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit weaker and maybe move it closer to the camera. Because if you look, some of these um, asteroids are obscured by the fog and some are not. That's okay because the farther away something gets, the more... Um, you know, uh, refraction and obs obscuring there is to it if there's atmosphere in the way, but it's sort of uh, a little too far back. So I'm going to move it forwards. So let's zoom out. Here we, here's our scene. Grab that front level of haze. Let's move it about twice as close as it was. So right about there. And let's um, just do it the cheating way and just shrink it down on the Z axis. So it's a little bit thinner. And I'm going to drag my white point lower to make it more transparent. So go over to object in your shader window. You can click on this white point right here and you can adjust your X and Y. So instead of dot two, three, let's try dot two. And the middle point here, drag that down a little bit too. Maybe a little bit lower on the white point. There we go. Cool. And it's a little too noisy. So let's put our detail back to like eight, maybe 10. We had it eight before and it was too blurry. Also my atmosphere, I did enlarge it earlier to see what it looked like and it just didn't look great. So I'm gonna size it back down. And uh, okay, another thing to improve renders like this is uh, some compositing, just to add a little bit of glare and a little bit of glow to your final render. So let me show you how I do that. In the compositor window, turn on use nodes. And here I already have my preset um, compositor set up already here. It just makes two copies of your rendered uh, image. One copy has a curves and a color balance applied. In case I want to do any color grading or, you know, like give it a moody color scheme, I can do that right here. Right now they're not doing anything, so they're basically not even needed. Um, but the cool thing about this setup is that I can control how much glare there is with a fader instead of the threshold, which is kind of gimmicky sometimes. And, you know, you, you get it set to where you want it, and then you can really play with the settings over here using the uh, factor mix. So the image gets copied, goes into a glare node, Make sure this is fog glow to your threshold, you know, not maybe not all the way down, but maybe like dot one or dot two. And your mix needs to be all the way positive one, which means the output of this glare is no longer including any of the original render, but only the glaring. 
whatever whatever the glare node is generating is all that's coming out of this image output, which is good. So we have the original image basically up here and only glare down here. Now we can add it on top of the, you know, we can add the glare to the original using this mix factor. Uh, so uh, don't use screen mode. It gives you some weird artifacts for some reason. I think it might be a bug, but use the add and um, let's hit render. And then I'll show you what it looks like to turn up or down this fader. And it's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna hit render again because earlier when I rendered, use nodes was not checked. So I have to render again now that it is enabled. All right, so here's my render with no glare. I'm gonna turn up the um, add mix factor to dot five. Look at that, got some cool glow on the planet, on the asteroids, and of course in that hazy belt. And let's turn it up all the way to number one. So full mix, that looks cool. It's a very subtle touch. You can even layer them to make it even stronger, or you can drop your threshold to dot one down to zero. And now kind of everything has a glow, which you know, you may want, you may not want. Try not to let that happen. I try to let the, the glare be a little bit more intentional. So I'm going to try dot oh five, kind of in the middle. There we go. Cool. And if you turn your size up to nine, it's just a larger glare. Well, that's as far as I'm going to go with it in this video. There's a lot of things you can do to improve this scene. Of course, change your color scheme. You can add really fine pieces of dirt. You can add impact craters, you know, um, cracked apart pieces. Use the cell fracture to crack some of these apart into little tiny pieces and make it look like they're drifting, you know, away from each other in space. Um, so yeah, be creative with it, have fun. And most of all, send me your darn renders. Do something cool with it, make it your own. Add a spaceship, add an astronaut just drifting through there, you know, calmly on, on vacation, uh, his final vacation, and send me that render to my email, daniel at danielgrovephoto.com, because I love seeing y'all's renders. Maybe I'll even do a video of y'all's renders or post them um, on my YouTube channel. That would be cool. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video and comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this one. Thanks for watching and have a great week blending.